Hey guys, Sean Pace here, coming live from Casa de Pache. Um, that's the Pace house, for those of you without a sense of humor. Um, and tonight, because it's Friday night and I'm lame, and this is what I do on my Friday nights, I make reads. I'm going to show you guys how to take your blanks and turn them into a read. You guys know how OCD I am. I've got 10 blanks here because I like to work in fives. So I'm going to do five of these with um, three eighths of an inch bevel and I'm going to do the other five with a half inch bevel. And then I like to compare just to kind of see where they're at. So let me share my screen here. I've got a document camera. I want you to see the tools that I'm using. Um, you're going to need some Rose clippers. Actually, you're not going to use these in this step. Forgot. I'll make another one. The light is pretty harsh, too. Okay, got my pliers, mandrel, wire, ruler. These are all the supplies you're going to need. Alright, first step. <coughs> We're going to take our blank here. Let's see if I can get this light working with me. Is that any better? It's a little better. It's not as harsh. That's going to be the main issue. Without light, it's next to impossible. What if this light was up this way? That's a little better. All right, got your blank here. First things first, we need to remove the string that we put on. There's a half hitch hook in there. I mean, half hitch, half hitch knot. I like to take it out just because I'm lazy. And just pull the string. Okay. Save your string for the next batch of reeds. Okay, at this point, I'm going to remove this wire here by tugging and backing out. I tighten my wires clockwise, so I'm turning these wires counterclockwise. It doesn't matter which way you turn them, as long as the wires see if I can get a good shot of this. As long as the wires are over each other. So they should be on opposite sides. When they come over, you have a center wire. You should have one wire above that and one wire below that. So whichever way you turn is your choice. No pressure. It's just a read. I was making reads with Miss Reynolds one time and I was devastated about something. She's like, it's just a piece of grass. I was like, oh yeah, it is. Okay, so at this point, I removed my pin. There's my forming pin. These have sat for about two weeks, I think. I haven't got to a point where I've got blanks just sitting there. I'd like to get to that point. Okay, at this point, actually I want to put it back on the forming pin because I want to measure my bevel. I'm going to do this one at 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to take my ruler here and I'm measuring from the butt. I'm measuring from the very back of the reed. Okay, I'm being vigilant about where I'm placing my ruler. Measurements are very important. One, two, three eighths of an inch. It's about right there. Okay, so I'm going to mark it there and I'm going to mark it on the other side. Sorry. One, two, three. Right there. Okay, at this point, 
This is the way I like to bevel. There's all kinds of different ways to bevel. Let's see if I can get the camera at the edge of my desk. What I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm actually going to put the sandpaper right on the corner of my desk here. So I'm actually going to open the reed just a little bit, not a lot. So it's at the bottom of my desk. And I use my fingers here, I kind of mark where my fingers are. So as I scrub against the sandpaper, my fingers stop. Okay. And this, by the way, is really, really thick grit sandpaper. I can't remember what it is, but it's on Miss Reynolds' list there. So I'm going to go back and forth, back and forth for a little while. I'm going to switch it over, flip it over, and do the same thing. Let my fingers be the bumper there. And do the same thing here. Now the end goal, what we're looking for. I'm really hoping you can see this. Maybe the light would be better in this case. No, the light is just way too intense. Yeah, that helps. Basically, you can see right there. That's what I'm looking for. Make sure I do it on both sides here. Now what that does, think of it like a clothespin. When you mash a clothespin on the back end, it opens up the front of the pin. So as I tighten this wire down here, it's going to make it's going to make the tip pop open. What that helps me achieve is not such a round first wire. And we'll get into wire talk as we progress down the road. Okay, at this point, I'm going to take my wire. I'm going to insert my mandrel. I'm not going to push it so far in that it's changing the shape. Okay, see, that's too far. Because now I'm changing the shape. I, I, I don't want to go so far that it's pushing this part of the reed up here, separating those blades. I just want it just enough. Okay. At this point, I'm going to hold my finger, my left hand, which is this hand. I'm going to hold those in place. Take my wire. Now, with my wire, this is how I put my wires on. I hold my I've got my mandrel in my hand. I hold my thumb even with the, the butt of the reed, the tube of the reed. I've got this much wire. So I've put a little bit on my thumb and with my thumb I'm holding it there. Now with this side I'm going to wrap it all the way around and come back the other side. Now this is the step I was talking about with the wires. That one needs to be on the the wires need to be on opposite sides, and it's at that point if you want to turn counterclockwise, you can turn counterclockwise. I've always turned clockwise. It's just a habit that I developed. So I'm gonna I'm gonna snug that wire. I'm not gonna tighten it. I just want it to hold it to my mandrel. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Rieger pliers and I'm going to crimp. I'm going to crimp this wood against this, this mandrel because I really, really want it to take shape. First, I'm going to do it evenly down the tube. And then as I turn the tube, I'm just going to do it a little bit, not a lot. John Chrisley talks about Sometimes you can get a reed that smiles if you press too much on the creases right here versus right here. So that's just something that I've been personally experimenting with. 
I, had, I did have some reeds that would smile at me too much. Not that that's a bad thing. Who doesn't like a smile? Okay, that's your middle wire. Bottom wire goes on the opposite direction. So again, my thumb. My thumb is holding right in the middle, holding that wire. I'm taking the longer end and wrapping it all the way around. about to get into measurement. It's very important that you memorize the measurements. The last wire, this last wire, should be roughly a quarter inch from the bottom. No more than a quarter inch. And I typically, personally, have been doing about a little more than an eighth of an inch because I want this back end of this bevel to really pop this blade out. So at this point, move my camera so I get some better leverage here. At this point I want to pull real tight. Now you see this equilateral triangle in the wire right there. You keep pulling and twist. You pull and twist. You pull and twist. You pull and twist. You got it until that equilateral triangle disappears and you really got to learn to pull with your elbows not your shoulders pull with your elbows I clip the excess off here I'm going to do it again Okay. Now I'm looking right here at the crease to make sure it's nice and sealed. And it is. I don't think I don't have any issues there. Okay, at this point I'm going to put the first wire on. First wire measures one inch from the bottom. One inch. That's the language of Sean. Welcome. Got a book coming out later. So again, I'm going to check my measurement. What should it be? One inch from the bottom, all the people said. Okay. The second wire now is going to fit three-eighths of an inch behind that first wire. It's about right here. One, two, a little further back. Three eighths of an inch, or one, two, three, four, five sixteenths of an inch from the bottom. Just depends on how you're looking at it. Okay, so this guy here, no more than a quarter inch from the bottom. You can experiment with it based on your bevel. Like I said, I just did a little more than an eighth of an inch. The second wire, five sixteenths from the bottom or three-eighths from the first wire. Essentially there should be three-eighths of an inch between these two wires to allow for enough fulcrum. And then the first wire is going to be one inch from the bottom. Sorry, I just realized I was shaking the camera. So at this point, again, see that equal lateral triangle? I'm going to pull and twist. And the second wire is crucial to get as tight as you can. A lot of times I do this. I'll pull and twist and I go back and crimp. I'll go back and crimp that tube. We'll cut the excess wire off. See, I got more. See that equilateral triangle? Pull, twist. Pull, twist. Okay, I'm going to make 
sure my first wire wants to sit where I, where I want him to. This, keeps, this guy's kind of wanting to go a different way. Now, first wire, you want to be gentle because you can actually deform your reed if you pull too hard on this one so what I actually like to do is hold it pinch it from the corners from the sides to stabilize it a little bit better and I don't pull on this one as hard I, I'm doing I'm still pulling and twisting but not as hard the second wire is the one that I'm really going to town on but we do want this one snug as a bug in a rug I got kids Okay, at this point, I like to sand the corners, sand the edges. I'm looking for a good piece of sandpaper. And now you're ready for a wrap. And there's a million ways to do this. Some folks like to do the shrink wrap. Some folks like to do hot glue. It really just depends on your personality, what you like, and how much time you want to spend on it. Um, I like to wrap the reed. So what I'm going to do at this point is show you how to do that. So I'm putting this down because I need Duco cement. This is important to have. And I'm also using this wire uh, string here. I bought this at Joann's Fabric and this is just cotton uh, knitting string. <laughs> um, and you can buy all kinds of different colors. I've got, this is a lighter color that I'm going to use. There it is under the document camera. Um, but I, I wrap my reeds in different colors each time that I'm do this step so after I make blanks because sometimes I'm using different reads I might have done a different process I want to see how things progress from one week to the other to kind of pay attention well the green batch was better or the maroon batch was better or and you'll develop a system that you like and prefer and I encourage you to do that in your read making journey but here are the basics for read uh, wrapping so the first thing I like to do is make a little loop here just make a little loop de loop and I just put it on that wire right there that last wire and then at that point I twist and then I slowly start wrapping around the tube I don't want to go real far just just a couple just a couple times at this point you can see this third wire he's pretty long I don't like him that long so I'm going to cut him down just a little bit more and then I'm going to fold him over over the wire that I just wrapped this is my process at this point I'm going to take my duco which is why I put this blue napkin down because the, the duco will leak all over the darn place just like that a brand a fresh bottle will and I am going to apply the duco from here up to that second wire this also helps with the sealing process maybe you didn't crimp hard enough or this glue actually can help seal any leaks that we might have missed if you got a brand new bottle you don't have to squeeze too hard I'm not I'm trying really trying not to put a lot on there but there's a bunch coming out okay now at this point I've got tension in my right hand and in my left hand I'm using it to um, what's the word revolve and I'm basically going to build a little mountain here in this one specific area and I'll show you why in just a second What this is called is it's called a, it's what they call the Turk's head. 
and of course there's different ways to do this you can kind of see that wire is exposed right there so I want, I want to cover that up with my string it just depends on how crazy you like to go with it okay, at this point I'm going to do just another touch of duco on uh, this little ball right here Now at this point, notice the crease in the reed, the seam. We call it the seam. So I'm going to go up and down across the seam. Now where I just went up, I'm going to go right beside it. See that? I'm going right beside where I just went. I'm going to come down right beside where I just went. And I'm going to go up where I just went. And down where I just went. And up and down. And up and down. Oh, sorry, we're not just in the rubber class. I got confused there for a second. Sometimes it gets a little weird, and then I'll skip one. I hope you can see this okay. Let's move the duco. And really, just keep going to your little heart satisfied. I mean, you could use the whole spool if you wanted to, but it'd look kind of funny if you're putting a baseball on your bassoon. Not to say it didn't work. I mean, I guess it'd be different if it actually sounded awesome and people were like, "Wow, he's got a baseball on his hand." We'll put a little more there. I don't know if you guys remember when I was in school, Jones double reeds. The, this wrapping would always come off and it's because they didn't glue it so at this point once I'm done making my revolutions around it's time to time to travel up the tube here so again I'm applying tension with my thumb I've got this this is good tension here and as I'm turning the wire across the string across I'm actually pushing it back down with my thumb so it's real snug To get to the end, I'm going to wrap it around my hand and basically create a half hitch. I'm going to cut this X off he excess off here with my dull scissors. And so what I've got here, I've got the string basically it's down here. I'm if I did it with one hand, basically you loop it around and you pull it through. That's called a half hitch. And then I'm going to pull, see this? It's a good angle. And that just holds it in place. Sometimes that happens, it gets over the wire, but you just kind of keep making it snug. So your little heart is satisfied and then I will use my incredible dull scissors to open the pair at this point you can I know like Sydney likes to do clear fingernail polish which is rad I need to try it uh, but I'm just gonna add a super small coat as small as I can without this tube going crazy because sometimes you can put like too much duco and it just it just makes it weird. It doesn't ruin anything. It just is it's aesthetically unpleasing to me. But again, I'm pretty crazy. At that point, I'm going to blow on it. It's 
so it'll dry air dry air drum and voila you have a read from a blank I gotta work on my light to a wrapped read set this on your drying rack because the duco is wet you want this to dry overnight or at least for a few hours before you start messing with it and in the words of emerald BAM <laughs>